In this video, I'll show you how to multiply and divide rational expressions. Now, we've had quite a bit of experience in our lives with rational expressions because kind of the level one or introduction to rational expressions and multiplying them is just fractions. And so the process we use to multiply fractions, which I'll show you in a second, is the same process that we're going to do now when we take these fractions and introduce some variables with those fractions. And then we're going to take that kind of to level three where we actually have some polynomials that we're going to put into the, uh, into the fractions here. And that's kind of our rational expressions, kind of level three. So let's start with level one, and I'll show you how this process here works. The easiest way to multiply rational expressions of all levels is to first factor everything out and divide out the common factors before we multiply anything together. For example, I'm going to draw one big fraction bar. When we multiply rational expressions or fractions, we simply go straight across. And so I'm going to write this multiplication on one big fraction bar, but before I actually multiply anything together, I'm going to go ahead and factor this. So I would start with this 3. 3 is a prime number, so I'm just going to write that down. 6, however, is not a prime number, and if I factor 6, I would get 2 times 3. So there's what 6 looks like factored. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the denominators. With 4, I'll write that as 2 times 2, and then with 9, I'll write that as 3 times 3. Now I'm going to look at this all factored here, I have this fraction all factored here, I'm going to look to divide out any common factors. And you can see that I have a common factor of 3 in the numerator and denominator, so I can divide that out, which would leave me with a 1 there, leaves me with 1 there. I also have a common factor of 2 that I can divide out of the top and the bottom. And finally, this last common factor of 3, that leaves me with 1 and 1. Now let's take a look at our final simplified answer to this multiplication problem. We're kind of simplifying right as we're multiplying here. So in the numerator, everything divided out, so I have a bunch of 1's left over. 1 times 1 times 1, well that's 1. And in the denominator, I have 2 left. Well, if I multiply 2 by a bunch of these 1's, I'm still going to have a 2. So when I get a final simplified answer for this fraction, I get 1 half. Now let's take a look at this same process now, kind of at level 2 here. I'm going to draw one big fraction bar, and I'm going to factor everything out. 2x, that would be 2 times x, times 10. Well, 10, when I factor that, is 2 times 5. 5 is prime, so I would write that as such. 3x squared, well, 3 is prime, so I'll write that, but x squared, I can factor that into x times x. And now I'm just going to take a look and divide out the common factors. So I have a common factor of 5, and I also have a common factor of x. So I divide that common factor of x out. Now let's take a look at our final simplified answer. In the numerator, I have 2 times 2, which is 4. In the denominator, I have 3 times x, which is 3x. So there's my final simplified answer. Now we'll take a look at some level 3 rational expressions. We're still going to follow the exact same procedure that we did with level 1 and level 2. We're going to start by drawing a big fraction bar. We're going to factor everything out, divide out the common factors, and then multiply what's left. Okay, so let's take a look here. The only difference with this level 3 rational expression is that we're going to have to know how to factor polynomials to factor these things. So if you're not familiar with factoring polynomials, you have to go back and learn that before this is going to make any sense. So starting here, I have x squared minus 9. That is the difference of squares. And so x squared minus 9 is going to factor into x plus 3 times x minus 3. Continuing across the numerator, I have times 2. Well, 2 is prime, so I'm just going to write that times 2. Now, when we're factoring polynomials, it helps, I think, to put everything in parentheses. So I'm going to put that 2 in parentheses. Still means we're multiplying here. I think it just helps to organize the information. Going across the bottom now, 8. If I factor 8, that would be 2 times 2 times 2. And now 3x plus 9, well, that has a common factor. And the greatest common factor of 3x and 9 is just 3. So I'm going to pull that 3 out front, but I'm going to put it in parentheses. And that's going to get multiplied by x plus 3. Now that I have everything factored, I'm going to go through and divide out the common factors. Well, I have a common factor of 2. It's pretty easy to see, so I'll divide that out. I also have a common factor of x plus 3 there, and I can divide out that common factor of x plus 3. Now that I've got the common factors divided out, I'm going to go ahead and multiply what's left. So I draw a fraction bar here. In the numerator, all I have is this x minus 3. So that's going to get multiplied by 1 and 1, so that's just going to leave us really with x minus 3 in the numerator. In the denominator, I have 2 times 2, or 4, and then 4 times 3 is 12. So there's my final simplified answer for multiplying those rational expressions. 
Now let's take a look at division. And again, we'll start with levels 1, 2, and 3. So level 1, we just have regular fractions. So one thing that we do with division is we don't try to perform the division as a division problem. We change it first to multiplication. And the way we do that is we multiply by the reciprocal. So here I would take 1 half. That's going to stay the same. Now I'm going to change division to multiplication. And I'm just going to take the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4 over 1. Another way to remember this is skip, flip, multiply. Skip the first one, flip the second one, change to multiplication. Okay? Once we have a multiplication problem, we do exactly the same thing we did when we were multiplying fractions. We factor it out. So I have 1 times, I factor 4, 2 times 2, 2 is prime, 1 is prime, so now I divide out the common factor of 2, and it looks like I end up with an answer of 2 over 1, which is just equal to 2. Now let's take a look at the same thing again, the division problem now at level 2. Again, we're going to change this division to a multiplication problem. First fraction stays the same. Multiply now by 5 over 14x. Once it's multiplication, we factor it all out. So going across the top, I'd have 7 times x times x times 5. Going across the denominators now, I'd have 2 times with 14, that's 2 times 7, and then times x. Now I look to divide out the common factors. Common factor of 7, common factor of x. So it looks like we have a 5x over 4. Now let's take a look at level 3. Same procedure again. I'm going to take and change it to multiplication. First stays the same. So I'd have x squared plus 4x plus 4 over 2. Now I'm going to take the reciprocal or flip the second one. So it would be 6 over 7x plus 14. Once I'm to this point, now I want to factor everything out and write it as all one big fraction getting multiplied together. So I'm going to factor this polynomial, x squared plus 4x plus 4. So that's going to be x and x. I want things that multiply to give me 4 and also add to give me 4. Well, that's 2. Because if I take 2 times 2, that gives me 4. And then outside is 2x plus inside is 2x is 4x. So that gives me that factored. Uh, going across the top, 6, I have 2 times 3. Put those in parentheses. Now let's go across the denominator. I have a 2, and I'm going to be multiplying that. Let's see, 7x plus 14. Uh, a common factor there, yep, the greatest common factor there is 7. So I could factor a 7 out of there. I put that in parentheses, and then when I factor the 7 out of that expression, I have x plus 2. Once I have it factored, now I'm going to look to divide out the common factors. So I have a common factor of x plus 2 and a common factor of 2. So now I'm going to multiply to see what I have left. So let's see. In the numerator, I'm going to be multiplying this 3 times this x plus 2. So I'm going to distribute that 3 to both of those terms. So that would give me 3x plus 6. And the denominator, I just have a factor of 7. So my denominator is going to be 7. So you can see that if we use this, we use the same procedure here whether we're multi or dividing fractions or rational expressions. And you can kind of see how we take this from level one where we have just fractions, and then we add some variables, and then finally to where we add polynomials into those fractions. Okay, so I've shown you how to work a couple of these, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Now it's time to practice one for yourself. Pause your video player and work this practice problem I've given you. When you get done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, so taking a look here, we have a division problem. I want to change it to multiplication. First rational expression stays the same. We've got to flip the second one. So let's see, that's going to give me 3x plus 24, x squared plus 4x minus 32. Once I have it written as multiplication, now I can go and factor everything out. So I write one big fraction bar. I factor everything out x squared minus 16, that's a difference of squares. So that's going to factor into x plus 4 times x minus 4. 3x plus 24, I'm looking for a common factor in there. The greatest common factor is 3, so I'll factor that out front. When I factor a 3 out, I would get x plus 8. Going across the denominators, I have 3. That's prime, so I'll leave it like that. Now I want to factor this trinomial into two binomials, so I'm taking x and x, 
Well, last term is negative. That tells me I need one positive, one negative. And so now I want things that multiply to give me 32, but have a difference then of 4. So multiply to give me 32, difference of 4, that is 8 and 4. And I want to make the 8 positive and the 4 negative, because when I go to add those then, that will give me the positive 4 in the middle. Okay, so let's double check that real quick. Outsides, that gives me negative 4x. Inside, positive 8x, that gives me the positive 4x. And then 8 times negative 4 gives me negative 32, so that's factored correctly. Now let's look to divide out the common factors. So I have a common factor of x minus 4, common factor of 3, and a common factor of x plus 8. So let's take a look at our final answer then. Notice all we have left here is this x plus 4 in the numerator. Everything else is divided out. So remember that when we divide these things out, there's a bunch of 1's left down here. So really what I have is this. I have x plus 4 over 1. And anything over 1, I can just write it as that thing. So x plus 4 over 1 is just going to give us a final answer of x plus 4.